Hi, I'm Jonathan Sullivan, Director of Catechetical Services for the Diocese of Springfield in Illinois. You know, one of the questions our office often receives is, what are the expectations of Christians from other traditions who teach in our Catholic schools? Well, there's a number of things that we can say about that, but I think we can easily condense it into five simple points. First, we expect all of our teachers to publicly support the mission of Catholic education, which in a nutshell is creating disciples for Jesus Christ. We're very, very proud of the great academic legacy of our Catholic schools. We're very proud of our, our sports teams and all the wonderful extracurricular activities and service projects that our schools do. But at the core of all of that is our mission for forming disciples of Jesus Christ. That is the essential mission of Catholic education. And our expectation is that all teachers, whether Catholic or not, support that mission and uphold it and talk about it in their classrooms and with their parents. The second thing we would expect is for them to talk about their relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, we value the faith of our Christian brothers and sisters, and we want them to share that, uh, not necessarily in a way that's going to denigrate our Catholic faith, of course, uh, but in a, a general Christian way. We, we hope that they will talk about their relationship with Jesus Christ, why Jesus Christ is important to them, uh, and share that with their young people, to be an example of that for the young people in their classrooms. Third, we expect them to participate, as appropriate, in the prayer life of their school. Now, we recognize that because of the brokenness of the body of Christ, we can't invite them to participate fully in liturgical actions such as the Mass, but we hope that they will participate, as appropriate, in the types of prayer that is open to them. So that includes opening and closing the school day with prayer, participating in services of the Word, uh, and other types of prayer that are open to all Christians. We, we hope and expect that they will participate in that prayer life. Fourth, we expect them to participate in faith formation opportunities, such as the different opportunities afforded through the catechist formation process, the diocesan adult enrichment conference, and other activities, both offered by the diocese, the school, and the parish, and within their own faith tradition. Uh, we don't expect them to be stagnant in their faith, but to constantly be seeking to grow in their faith, to grow in their love and knowledge uh, of our Christian faith. And finally, we expect them to live in a manner consistent with Catholic teaching. And that, again, is something we expect of all of our teachers, that uh, they are living in a way that upholds the dignity of the human person, that serves as a witness for Christian discipleship, as a, a witness for the sacredness of life and, and for the teachings of the church. So that would be our, our final expectation, that they live in a manner consistent with what the church understands Christian discipleship to be. But on top of what we expect of our Christian teachers, there's some things that they can expect of us uh, as a diocese and as a church. First, they can expect that we will provide opportunities for them to understand and learn about the Catholic faith, uh, again, through the catechist formation process and other activities sponsored by the parish and the diocese. Uh, we, we want them to know what the Catholic Church is all about so that they can answer questions as they arise, either from parents or within the classroom. Second, they can expect that we will not disparage their faith. Uh, in fact, we should be seeking to overcome the type of stereotypes and ignorance that can sometimes unintentionally lead to harmful words uh, about our Protestant brothers and sisters. So they can expect that, that we will uphold the dignity of their faith in Jesus Christ and, and not speak down about it. Third, we will not require them to become Catholic. Uh, we will not proselytize them. We will not browbeat them until they uh, join the church. Uh, now, we will certainly evangelize them. We will certainly expect uh, our non-Catholic teachers to further their journey of discipleship, to deepen their relationship with Jesus Christ. We will encourage them and support them in that, uh, but we will not require that they become Catholic. Now, we do have certain expectations about certain roles in the school, however. Uh, it is our policy that uh, the principal and anyone who teaches religion must be Catholic because of the important catechetical nature and evangelizing nature of those roles. Uh, but we will not require teachers to become Catholic if they aren't already. And finally, our, all of our teachers can expect that we will pray for them, and we do. Uh, we pray for all the teachers in our Catholic schools on a regular basis, that they will be uh, worthy servants of Jesus Christ in the classroom, that they will have the wisdom and the knowledge and the patience and the perseverance to answer the call of Christ to educate young people and to be uh, a witness to young people uh, in the Catholic faith. And so uh, we will pray for all of our teachers, uh, especially those uh, who aren't Catholic. 
So that is our basic expectations of Christians from other traditions in our Catholic schools and what they can, uh, what they can expect of us as a diocese and as a church. So uh, I just want to say thank you to all of our teachers for the wonderful gift of service you give to, to Jesus Christ through the church and for the wonderful example you show to young people of what it means to be a disciple, what it means to uh, strive towards holiness in the Christian life. Thank you, and God bless.